Hello SL2. Tonight's topic is 1.5 trig identities. And I just want to start right off with the formula packet that you got today in class to realize that we're just going to know where these formulas are and know how to use them. So if you turn to the page that has topic 2 and topic 3 formulas, and specifically go to topic three, uh, the circular functions and trigonometry formulas. And below there you can see we, we haven't used these two formulas yet, but we talked briefly about them. Those are in your definitions. And tonight's notes we'll be talking about the trig identity, our Pythagorean identity, our, and our double angle formulas. Also, we'll be talking about the cosine rule and the sine rule. And one thing I want you to realize is the cosine 2 theta, this double angle formula for cosine 2 theta, has three, you've probably last year saw it this way, each time it was split up to three different uh, definitions. This is still the same thing, but notice how they just use the equal sign in each section here. So since they're all equal to cosine 2 theta, we can set them equal to each other. So depending on how you're going to be using the formula, realize that there might be, you might just pull this part out, or this section, or the third one. So that can be confusing for students. I wanted to make sure you realize that this right here is saying this. Also, another thing to notice is our cosine rule is written um, for C. You have used these rules where they're written at, to C squared, B squared, or A squared, or cosine C, cosine A, and cosine B. But it's only going to be given to you in this format. So we'll be talking about starting here from this formula and then realizing how you're going to adjust it based on what triangle they give you. Our first topic is talking about just triangle review, and we want to be able to solve a triangle, find all unknown angles and side lengths. When you have isosceles and right triangles, you're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem and our trig functions as necessary. So remember from our first class in um, our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared, equals c squared. We also used our knowledge of with right triangles, so Katoa, and you can use where sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And anytime you have a right triangle or can create a right triangle, then you'll be using your Pythagorean theorem and trig functions. When it comes to having a triangle that you have three sides, or a side and an angle on a side, but you don't have a right triangle, you're going to be using your cosine rule. So some of you already knew that rule, and we can always use that as well. And here again, you can see it's solved. We're going to start here the way it's written in our formula packet. Let's look at an example, and we have our triangle ABC, where they give us that A is 8, C is 7, and B is 131 degrees. And they want you to find B and C. So remember, when they have the triangle ABC, your triangle, if it's not drawn for you, you might have to draw it and it should be in this um, order, A, B, C. And your, when you draw it, make sure your B makes sense to the picture. It's 131 degrees, so it should be greater than 90 when you draw your picture. So here's your angle, 131. This is angle B. Remember how we set that up, the side that's opposite, that angle B will be called uh, B. 
the side that's opposite angle A is called A, and the side that's opposite angle C will be called C. So when we line up our 8, it'll be here. Let's use a different color for the numbers. Our C is 7, and our other known is 131. They want us to find B and angle C. That's what they want us to find. So angle C, we're going to be able to use straight this formula, the cosine C. But currently we don't know our side B length yet. So we'll first have to find B and then use this formula to find C. Well, to find B, we can use our knowledge that we know that we can set up this formula for A, B, or C. And remember, when it's set for solving for C, you know the angle for cosine C. So right now, the only angle we know is B, so we're going to set up this equation for solving for B. So anytime you're setting up to solve for a different side length, you'll have it set for the length you want to solve, and then you wrote the angle here will change to that side. So in this case, we're solving for B squared, so we want this to be cosine B. And then these two letters, you want them to be the opposite side that you're not signing, the two sides that you're not solving for. So it would be A and C. Obviously then you'd have A squared plus C squared, that would change the C squared, minus 2AC cosine B. So take a minute, go ahead and pause the video and plug in your known values and, and then start the video again. So when you did that, you should have B squared equals to 8 squared because A, A is 8, plus 7 squared because C is 7, minus 2 times 8 times 7 times cosine of 131. As I'm going to simplify, B squared is equal to 64 plus 49 minus this value here that we're going to find using our calculator. In our calculator, we're going to put, um, put in 2 times 8 times 7 times the cosine of 131. Remember to use your mode for degrees when you go to put the answer in. So change, you have to hit mode, and then if it's on radian, you'd have to change the degrees. Then you'll plug in 2 times 8 times 7 times cosine of 131. And then you hit enter. And you get minus 73.48. So you want to make sure that you don't miss that sign because you have a minus, a minus 73.48. So that would become a positive 73.48. So then we would add up all three of those numbers, and that would sum to 186.48. Then we we'll are take the square root of both sides. So B would equal plus or minus 13.65 because this, this is a distance we're going to have B is going to be equal to 13.7 units. Now IB at the end of every problem they want you to round to three significant digits and provide three significant digits. So now that you've solved for B the last step is solving for angle C. So we will now solve for angle C and we'll use the cosine rule again where we have cosine of C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared all divided by 2 times A times B. So that would be A squared 
plus 13.7 squared minus 7 squared divided by 2 times 8 times 13.7. When we simplify this, we get the cosine of C to equal 0.92468. Then we take the inverse cosine of um, both sides and we get C to equal 22.4 degrees. Here's how it looks in the cal calculator. So you take the inverse cosine of 0.92468 and you will get your angle of 22.4 degrees. The last example for tonight's notes is using the sine rule. When you're given two angles and a side, the best uh, formula to use is the sine rule. And remember how this formula is. It's the side A divided by sine of A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So in example two, we're given triangle ABC where the angle um, A is 97 degrees, B is 24 degrees, and side A is 45. So go ahead and pause the video and practice um, solving for all sides and all angles. When it says solve the triangle, they want to know every um, possible angle and every side. Go ahead and pause the video and set that up yourself. Okay, my first step was to solve for C. We know that all three angles must add up to 180 degrees so if I take 180 degrees and subtract 97 and 24, we will find um, the, how many degrees angle C has. And it is 59 degrees. My next step is using the sine rule to find both C and B. To find Psi length B, I'm going to have A over sine A equal B over sine B. So that would be 45 over sine of 97 equals B over sine of 24. Here to solve for B, I'm going to cross multiply. Remember, you can only cross multiply when you have two fractions equal to each other. So if I cross multiply, I will have B times sine of 97 equal 45 times sine of 24. Now to isolate B, I'm going to divide both sides by sine of 97. And I will find that B is equal to 18.4 units. Similarly, we can solve for C in the same way where we have 45 over sine of 97 equals C over sine of 59. Again, you cross multiply and go ahead and try that on your own and bring it back. There are two ways to put this in the calculator to find um, C. One way is to multiply 45 times sine of 59, hit enter, and then divide by sine of 97. The other would to be add parentheses. And you'd have to have some these parentheses, so the entire numerator has a set of parentheses and the denominator to get the correct answer. So a lot of times that's why I prefer just to do it in two steps in the calculator. All right, hope you have a good night. Uh, see you next time.